Hi there, my name is Renee Coleman and I'm going to read uh, an essay called Small Town Saturday Nights from my new cookbook called All the Sweet Things. J.D. Salinger wrote that certain things should stay the way they are. You ought to be able to stick them in one of those big glass cases and leave them alone. I know it's impossible, but it's too bad anyway. I've been blessed to have felt this way a good many times in my life and perhaps never more so than in my late teenage years growing up in the small town that bordered Alberta and Saskatchewan. I had a tight group of good friends, the kind of friends you spill all your secrets to while staying up late and eating ice cream cake. The summers of 1990 and 91 were especially fun. We were going into grade 12, then university. Friday and Saturday nights mainly consisted of us spraying our hair too high and dancing around to the B-52s or in excess in someone's living room. Eventually, we would pile into a parent's car, or if we were lucky, our own, and drive up and down the four-lane main drag, otherwise known as the four-laner. General objectives of this activity were twofold. Scout for boys, preferably not from our high school, and stop for snacks. I won't dish too much dirt on the boys, a girl has to have some secrets. But when the cruising came to an end, we almost always stopped at the local Tim Hortons for a donut. With our honey crullers and chocolate glazed, we'd sit at our table and go over the evening's events or lack thereof. When the curfews approached, the driver would drop each of us off at our houses. More often than not, we would linger in the driveway as we said goodnight to each other. Talk tends to get more serious when sitting in the dark. Topics covered usually included the looming future and what the hell we were doing with our lives, the usual teenage angst. While we were excited to be growing up moving away further into the world, in our hearts we were scared and a little sad that what we had would eventually end. After graduation, I was the first to move away, then a few others followed. Some stayed behind, and while you make all kinds of efforts to visit and talk, nothing is ever quite the same as it was in those high school weekend nights. A couple of those girls are still my closest friends in the whole world. Whenever we find ourselves in each other's city, talk over bowls of ramen or coffee and donuts tends to still be along the lines of what the hell we're doing with our lives and the looming future, the usual adult angst. I'm so happy our friendships have stood the test of time. Those pals you had when phones still had cords are the best pals you can ever ask for. We've seen marriages, births, big moves, breakups, death, great big joys, and the depths of, this, of despair. Dreams come to life and dreams come to an end. I still have to bust a move whenever I hear the B-52s on the radio, even at means dancing in the seat of my car. I don't care if I look like an idiot. I'm 17 again with big hair and big dreams. For a second, it feels like the friends of my youth are still sitting in the car with me, rocking out in spirit.